What's happening guys, Evan Texas. welcome to Setup Wars episode 218 Ultimate Edition. We're gonna take a look at some of the best setups that get submitted on the show. And if you think your setup is worthy to be in this category, then by all means, I dare you to participate. I'll drop a link to a video down below that will guide you on what you need to do to get on the show. But yeah, with that said, sit back and relax, grab your popcorn or biscuits because it's time for Setup Wars. If you're a content creator like myself, then you're gonna love today's sponsor, Storyblocks. You know, creating videos can be challenging. Sometimes I need a specific scene for a video, but I just don't have the resources or the time to go out there and shoot. But with Storyblocks, I'm able to find that perfect content with a click of a button. My personal favorites are the abstract backgrounds, which I like to use to add a bit of dynamic to my videos. I'm sure you guys have seen this in past videos, specifically where I tend to write text on the screen. It's a great way to grab the audience's attention. They have a ton of awesome footage like this that can improve your videos, but they also have the largest offering with an ever-growing library of over a million high-quality stock assets, which are all royalty-free. So you can use your downloaded content anywhere for commercial and personal use. They offer an unlimited all-access subscription plan that gives you unlimited downloads of everything in their library. If you're a content creator, you have to try them out. Visit storyblocks.com or click the link down below. Kicking off the episode is Lorenz from the Philippines and his custom-made ultra-wide setup. He built a custom desk with chrome accents and mounted that to the wall. The result is this awesome floating desk which looks really cool. It's also interesting the way he mounted the desk. So in addition to mounting it to the wall, he also attached a chrome beam that's attached to both the ceiling and the left side of the desk along with one more support on the bottom. I don't know what it is with that concrete texture on the countertop, but it looks really good and works well with the industrial vibe of the entire room. You know, it's refreshing to see custom made desks like this on the show instead of the usual IKEA linen tabletops. Lorenz uses the setup for purely gaming and he slaps kids around on that 34 inch Asus Ultrawide that he mounted to the wall right beside it. Excellent choice mounting it on the wall, which also gives the monitor a floating look to complement the desk. I could imagine drilling a hole in a concrete table wouldn't be easy, so Lorenz made the smart choice of going wireless for both the keyboard and mouse, and it appears he also has a backup Asus Spatha as well. For audio, Lorenz uses the Sennheiser GSP-600s for mostly everything, however he does own a pair of Sony SA speakers that seem to not exist in some of the pictures he sent me. Like, what happened here exactly? Did you decide mid-submission that the speakers don't look good in your setup and you took them down? One minor thing that stood out to me was the power strip cable you have coming out of the bottom of the desk. I think you did a fine job with everything else, especially sleeving the monitor cable near the back, but that one cable is sticking out like a sore thumb. I feel like this could have been easily avoided by going with a black power strip instead and running the cable against the wall by using cable clips instead of leaving it hanging like that. I only mention this because I feel like you spend so much time building that awesome custom desk of yours that a tiny little oversight like this feels unusual. Also, there are a few things on the desk that I randomly placed like the Switch controllers and some of the watches that don't really contribute anything to this setup. I think it will look more organized if you place them side by side alongside the top of the setup next to the other controllers you have. Moving on to the monolith of a gaming PC that powers this setup. Take a look at that thing. It's equipped with the 8700K, 32 gigs of RAM, and the Asus Strix 1070 Overclock Edition. An absolute monster of a tower you got there, and I'm loving that custom backplate and PSU shroud that you built for the case. But what I love most about this setup is the lighting. I think the setup looks absolutely jaw-dropping at night with that purple lighting and the fact that you tied it in so well with that Gengar Evolution art on the wall was the icing on the cake for me. This setup is so different on many different levels. The location of the setup, the style, and the theme overall. But you know what, there were a few things that were overlooked that really hindered the setup's full potential. But either way, it's a kick-ass setup. Thank you, Lawrence, for sharing this with us. I was going to make a Mario joke for this submission, but I'm sure it's overused at this point. Coming at number two is Luigi from Belgium and his epic gaming and entertainment setup. Fun fact, this is actually his very first gaming setup that he built. I just have to start off and say that the presentation is just so beautiful, it brings tears to my eyes. Luigi built this setup on top of the car blue countertop with two white Alex units, which gives the setup a really nice contrast. 
He even kept that contrast consistent by adding a brick themed wallpaper on the left and installing white wall shelves on it. In fact, that wallpaper isn't actual wallpaper. He used a few different sized wood materials to give it a 3D effect. He definitely knows what he's doing. The setup is rocking two displays. We got an ultra wide as the main display and a 55 inch 4K TV up top. And I love how he used a single raceway to hide both the TV and monitor cables going down the wall. For peripherals, Luigi is using the K70 keyboard and a Razer Basilisk mouse. However, I think the white version of that mouse would have looked better in your setup. Even though it is wired, you could have easily hid that cable along with your mouse pad. And speaking of which, personally, I think this mouse pad would look better in the setup as it will contribute to the color scheme and complement the keyboard at the same time. But I'm gonna guess you went with Corsair so that you can control the lighting conveniently with the IQ software. Again, this is all just personal preference. Staying consistent with the theme of the setup, we have both Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers in white and his Arctis wireless headset sitting on the Razer Chroma stand. I love that he added a Gundam suit figurine on the left side to occupy that empty space while balancing it with his custom PC on the opposite side. We got the Ryzen 5 3600 in here paired with the Aura's RTX 2070 Super. It's such a clean build, but I'm gonna be that guy again and point out some things you could have done to improve the look of the PC. And I'm sure at this point, you know what I'm gonna say. Swapping the three front intake fans for three of the white LL120s. And personally, I think the white Asus Strix card would look amazing in that build. Cables are managed flawlessly as we can see. Luigi did a fantastic job adding multiple raceways to channel the wires with multiple power strips, no complaints. The beautiful thing about this white and RGB setup is that it can change into any color scheme simply by changing the lighting across all the devices. That is why white setups are really popular now. It's because it offers the most flexibility without locking yourself in a constant color. One minor critique I have is maybe adding more things to the wall shelves because right now it's looking a bit empty. But other than that, I think you built a superb setup, especially considering this is your first time. Thank you Luigi for entering and extra points for your cute baby. Coming all the way from Germany is Richard and his epic quad display battle station. Take a look at this beast. Richard is a software engineer and this is the setup he uses for gaming, streaming and of course work. We got a 49 inch 4K TV mounted up top with a 27 inch 1440p monitor in the center that he games on, finishing off with two additional 24 inch displays for secondaries. He built the entire setup on a Lindman tabletop with a few capital lakes to add some spacing between the Alex drawers and he used that extra space to store his PS4 Slim on one side and his external hard drive on the other. On the desk we got quite a few things going on. Richard is using the Razer Huntsman Elite keyboard and a Basilisk Ultimate mouse with the addition of a Tartarus keypad. He also has a pretty sweet streaming setup as well. We got the Elgato Stream Deck for on-the-fly macros and a Samsung Galaxy tablet to view chat while streaming. I also like those white cable grommets that he installed in the desk to help with cable management. One of them even doubles as a USB hub and the other is a wireless charger that he installed in the desk. Very nice. For audio, he has a few headsets that he keeps tucked away. We got the Razer Nari hanging from the side of the drawers and the Kraken 7.1s hidden behind one of the monitors. But he also has a couple of sound bars as well, one for the TV and the other for the rest of the setup. Cables are managed really well, especially considering he has so much tech in this setup. I love that he went with a cable tray to hide all the cables. This is a much better option instead of going with an IKEA Signum rack if you find yourself with too many cables to manage. It also opens up really easily if you need access to any of the wires. And finally, the PC powering this monster of a setup is nothing short of amazing. We have a custom water cool system inside the level 20 case from Thermaltake with some pretty sweet bends in here. I also love that you put the PC on a small shelf with wheels so you can move it around easily. Big brain moves over here by Richard. Now even though the setup looks very busy and cluttered, Richard did a great job keeping everything nicely spaced out and organized. There isn't any unnecessary things on the desk. Even this claptrap figurine from Borderlands has its purpose. Not only does it add a bit of personalization to the setup, but it also holds up his controller. Excellent planning and execution of this battle station. Thank you Richard for sharing it with us. Coming in at number four is Mr. Pimpass from Tokyo. It's been a while since we got someone from Japan, so welcome on the show. Mr. Pimpass is a streamer and gym owner, which you can probably tell based on the man cave that he built. 
We have gaming on one side and lifting weights on the other. It feels like I'm trapped in the cyberpunk game with all of this retro lighting. I'm starting to see more and more setups using this color scheme and honestly, I don't think I can get tired of it. So the setup is built on a custom L-shaped desk and it's pretty cool how he went about making it. The side table was custom made and he attached it to a Linman tabletop from Ikea and added a 10 millimeter glass top to give it a nice reflective surface. When he streams, he uses the Alienware laptop to read the chat while he games on his 38 inch Dell ultrawide monitor and he streams with his GH5 camera up top. For peripherals, Mr. is using the Japanese version of the K70 rapid fire keyboard with a mixture of black and white keycaps and he paired that with the Razer Landsat gaming mouse. He did his best to stay with a white color scheme so the colors reflect off of it easier. He even went and painted a few things in here to match the color scheme of the entire room, like his Herman Miller chair and his workout machine. But he took it a step further and he branded his logo on both of them as well. The same could be said about his custom PC, and to my surprise, it's running on SLI. We have the 5820K 6-core processor in here with dual 1080s. Oh, how I miss SLI builds. Such a cool gaming room you built here. Thank you, mister, for entering. Wrapping up the episode is Sam from the US and his retro-themed triple monitor setup that he uses for gaming, schoolwork, and media consumption. We have a 34-inch ultrawide in the middle, sandwiched by two 22-inch monitors that are all mounted against the wall, looking really good. The desk is an interesting one. He's using a custom 8-feet tabletop made out of birch plywood that he stained in black with some legs from Ikea and an old desk. You know, there's a lot of surface area on this desk, and judging by the space between the keyboard and the monitors, I can't help but feel like the monitors are a bit too far from you. Speaking of space, I feel like you could have gotten bigger speakers than those to try and fill up all the extra space on your desk. You know, it's one thing to go with a minimal setup, but it's another if the gear to empty space ratio, as I like to call it, is unbalanced. Though with that said, I do appreciate the fact that Sam kept the setup very symmetrical by placing the IKEA plants and the car models in the correct spots on the desk. You can tell that Sam really took the time to plan everything out. And finally, we got the PC that's tucked away in the corner, another beautiful custom system built inside the super popular Lian Li O11 Dynamic. We got the 9700K in here with the ASUS Strix RTX 2070 Super, and for once, I'm happy to see the correct fan placements. We got six for intake and five total for exhaust, including the push and pull from the AIO. Nicely done. Adding an RGB strip behind the painting up top was a nice subtle mod that complements the rest of the lighting in your setup along with those hexagon RGB panels on top of your PC. What an awesome gaming setup to end the episode. Thank you Sam for entering. And that is it for this video. As always, before you guys leave, consider slapping the crap out of that like button if you enjoyed the video as it does help out with YouTube's algorithms. And also let me know in the comment section down below which of these setups was your favorite. If you're new here and you enjoy watching these videos, consider subscribing because I host them every single Monday. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love your beautiful cheeks and I will see you very soon in the next one.